All right, what is this lady doing? Hey, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell. It's that time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You know it. You love it. You're here for it. It's a show and tell here from the Adafruit Factory. I'm Lady Ada, broadcasting from downtown Manhattan. The Adafruit Factory, we do all the design, testing, manufacturing, shipping, kitting, and support of all the electronic goodies you know and love with me, Mr. Lady Ada, doing camera control and answering questions and stuff. But uh, enough about us. Who cares about us? What we care about is you, the makers, the crafters, the dreamers of dreams. Come on by. We're here until 7.50 p.m. Do we got to get ready for the next show? Uh, we're going to go through some Adafruit folks. Anybody else? You got a webcam? Go to the Hangout link. It's free. We'd love to see your project. Take two to three minutes when we call on you to show off what you've been hacking and working on. And uh, after that, just mute your mic again so we can keep moving. Let's kick it off with JP. What's going on in your workshop? Hey, well, I'll what? tell you what's going on in my workshop. What's going on is I'm working on a little Bluetooth rover bot this week. And but JP, uh, you built a Bluetooth rover bot before. Like, who cares about this rover bot? What? Yeah, what? You, you know what's interesting, though, is I've never built one with CircuitPython because it was never possible before. Oh, today. my goodness. Is that now possible? <laughs> it is. With our NRF52840, it is totally possible with a cricket and a feather and CircuitPython to super quickly iterate on your code and create a little bot. So I'm uh, gonna show this on the show tomorrow. I'll just do a little tease of uh, one of its functions, which is I got some sweet underlighting there mm. that you can see uh, changing colors as I do things. And I'm gonna have that uh, be reactive to the controls that you send it for driving so that you can see it turn red when it stops and yellow when it turns and that sort of fun stuff. And that's just the beginning of the kinds of things that you can do uh with that on a cricket because we have all those great juicy ports for connecting servos and other things wow that's so amazing i yeah. just had no idea i was just like this is some boring robot is, who cares but this is actually the most sure, exciting thing to happen this week yeah. all right so and they can walk tomorrow yes yeah, so your, your show is live it's cold out or maybe it's not uh come by jp's show where he will build this for you and you got two guides this week as well so check that's those right. out while you're Let's waiting. Check Go check out the guides. All right, thanks. Okay, glowy, glowy. All right, nine Pedro, what are you three printing this week? Uh, yes. Yeah, so this week it's a nice, small, simple project. It's a bit of a problem. I have a lot of Raspberry Pis and they lay around. I don't do anything with them. Is that really a problem? Kind of. Oh, okay. So I figured I'd make a simple 3D printed stand for the Raspberry Pi Zero, because we got a lot of bonnets and there's also lots of fun bonnets like this one from Pyramoni. This is the speaker fat. This thing is such a lovely piece of hardware. And uh, I have it plugged in right now to my wall and it's playing some tunes. So I figured I'd make this a uh, really simple uh, stand. It uses the uh, the M25 nylon standoff, uh, brass standoff, blah, blah, blah. nylon standoffs. We have a kit in the shop. So I figured yeah. I'd use those. Uh, and that's it, just a simple little stand for your Raspberry Pi. Right. Simple but effective. Yeah, I think so. So All if you right. guys want to check that out and some special stuff that we showed off, check out Hit the 3D Hangouts. We did that in the morning. All right. Nice. All okay, right. sweet. Thanks for the update. Oh, so much good stuff coming yeah. down the pipe, down right. the extruder. Next up, Aaron, what are you glowing? So yeah, this week it's been cold and rainy, so I'm inside working on fancy dress ball costumes. Um, and the first one I want to show is I have some uh, their spats. So um, I'm making a whole fancy costume. Um, these are LED just spats. I know it's a little bit hard to see from just here. So uh, they've got really cool little Adafruit stars that are laser cut out of black leather on them. And a NeoPixel strand with a little Gemma M0 inside there. Um, I'll show a little video of what they look like when they're on. Uh, show, 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 show. There we go. And I'll just hit play here so you can just kind of see a little bit of how it looks. Um, they're pretty fun. Uh, just as a sort of accessory for, you know, your ankles. <laughs> the rest of you is glowing so that you can see. Um, it, there's, I want, I want lights everywhere. That's why. Yeah, this one's actually really popular for like, like Burning Man and other events where, you know, you're wearing like a skirt and it's like above the knee, but you want to like cover your legs because it's cold out. LED spats are where it's at. Cause like leggings are, you know, they're okay, but they don't glow. Yeah. Like spats do. And there's, there's LED shoes and stuff, but they're, uh, you know, they're, I don't know, they, they tend to break and they tend to get wet and that sort of thing. But these are, yeah. these are pretty fun. They're, I, they're not like anything I've seen before, so. 
I, yeah, I see a lot of cosplay. They make spats also because it's like getting custom shoes made is so expensive, but you just cover it and you can't really tell unless you're looking close. Yeah, and this one you don't even need fancy expensive boots. It looks almost like you're wearing fancy expensive boots without having to spend 300 bucks on them. So Yeah, totally. All right, anything else happening that you want to maybe show? Or? Um, I got one more mm -hmm. I can show, which I'm working on, uh, so, which goes with the same costume. Uh, so this is going to be a fancy little fascinator hat. Um, it's got a Gemma M0 in it and also a little NeoPixel jewel, and it just goes on the head like this. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about this. Like the, the more of these fancy costume accessories, it, it all goes together. I'm doing a corset project as well, so, and a bustle. So um, putting it all together, it's, it's just um, stunning. <laughs> you can get so many LEDs in a bustle. I mean, I can't even wait. Uh, it's going to be awesome. All right, more, so much glowing coming from Aaron. Thanks. People are loving your projects. Okay. okay, and then Katni came on by. Hello, what you hacking on? So, uh, last week or two weeks ago, I talked about how I routed my first board. Um, well, it came in and you sent it to me. And so I have been working on the driver for it, which I am going to show off here, I think. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. So, this is the driver. Um, we're using what's uh, a library called Register that actually does a lot of the extra heavy work for you. So instead of having to uh, define um, constants for all of the addresses and then use uh, bitwise operations to, um, to unpack them, uh, Register does all that for you. So you instead use lines like this. Um, where you tell it uh, to use struct and you give it the address and then you tell it um, what the struct format is. And then later, um, there's a bunch of different ones here, um, you can uh, call it from the code and it just looks like this. So what I have going on over here is uh, proximity data and light data, which the proximity number will go up and the light data will go down as I put my hand towards the sensor. Ooh, ooh, you're covering the sensor right now. I am. The proximity, it's funny, the proximity goes up because it actually means more light. The way these work is they bounce light off of your hand. So the proximity number goes up as your hand gets closer, but the light level, the ambient light level goes down because you're shading it. Tricky. Yes. And uh, this was what I translated into all of that. Uh, was the this, Rosetta Stone. Yes, this <laughs> giant mess of a data sheet. Um, so yeah, so the only thing I actually have going on here is it reads the device ID and it enables the proximity sensor and the light sensor. And then I am able to uh, read that data here um, after initializing it uh, using I squared C. Well, it looks great. I mean, it's a, quite a challenge to read a data sheet and, and uh, decode that. Uh, excellent work on your first data sheet decoding. Each one is a unique and special <laughs> experience. <laughs> um, I, you know, if it wasn't a kid's too, I'd liken it to like a really bad trip. But you, just don't, you just don't know what you're going to get uh, each right. time. But this one wasn't too bad. There wasn't too many lies in this data sheet, I think. Most of it was true. Um, yeah, it just had weird things divided out weirdly. Yeah, that's and totally. That's that was, for you. <laughs> yeah, that was that was what I ran into was just the the oddness of that. So divided out that's what I've been doing. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Um, yeah. Can you, Roberta? Can you mute your mic? Thanks. Sorry. Um, okay. Well, good work. Can any more coming? And we'll see that hardware coming out soon. And it, uh, we put your name on the back of it too, which is pretty sweet. That was very sweet. <laughs> it's very exciting. Okay. All right. Next up, let's go to Scott's circuit boards. Hello. I had less hover cam issues this time, which are great. Um, I've shown a number of keyboards, both computer and piano keyboards, off on here. Um, so I thought I would show you my latest uh, piano keyboard that I found. And I've taken it apart because I cleaned it all up. Uh, and so this is just the guts of a Yamaha PSS 460. So if I hold this under the hover cam, this is the the actual like uh, elastomer pads for the whole piano keyboard here. Um, and then it's attached to the main board via this, this ribbon cable here. 
And what I like about this one, I've got a couple others, but I think this is the only one that's this way, is that all of the interface PCBs are separate. So this one here is the all the control panels above the keys that you play. Um, these are actually like elastomer sliders. I can't kind of see it. It's all like attached together, uh, which is really interesting. And my hope with this is that um, because the key matrix goes over these, the, the top PCB has a similar parallel uh, nature to it. I want to be able to, to basically cut those and put CircuitPython in between so that it can read everything you're playing and also play everything back on the keyboard as well. Um, the PSS460 is particularly interesting because this is the sound synth synthesis chip, which is the, YAM the YM3812 uh, that was also used on the Sound Blaster and AdLib cards uh, in the early 90s, I believe. So um, there's potentially even some more hacking I could do to actually have direct register access to that chip as well, which would be uh, quite neat. But I think I'll just start, start with being able to just play, play back cool. all that. All right, good stuff happening. It's going to be running CircuitPython any moment. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. Yeah. Next okay, time. next up, okay. Melissa and then Sophie. Melissa, what are you coding? You're just a coding monster. <laughs> so many pull requests. Oh, click the unmute. I don't know if we'll Melissa, can, can you hear us? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, my call, I dropped off and then went back on. No, well, we want to hear what you're All coding. Right. You're on. Oh, well, I'm actually, what I was going to show off was this oh, car okay. that I have. And it runs with a Grand Central here. Oh. Yeah, thanks for posting up the progress on Twitter. We saw that, and I added it to the newsletter. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, I saw that. So I yeah. thought I'd show it off on. Yeah, I like the, the idea of it being a smart remote control car that it can make decisions on its own in addition to being a remote control car. That's cool. Oh. oh. The car took over. Oh no, the car, the AI is like, I don't want to be on. This is like the plot of Terminator 3. It's like, do you want I'll to, just add uh, a Grand Central to them. Okay, let's go to Sophie. Let's go to Sophie, we'll come back to Melissa. Yeah. Hey, Sophie. Hello. Hi. I brought my space helmet. Wow, that's epic. I've got the lights down, so hopefully it looks okay. But so I've got all the lights in here, and these, these lights light up when I talk. Um, and it started out as a purchased helmet, just a costume astronaut helmet, and I painted it and added a whole bunch of foam. Um, I'm gonna turn the light on so you can see the details. So this whole helmet was white when I got it, and I just added all of these foam bits. This is a lot of um, laser cut EVA foam. I cut it on my Glowforge. Um, this is engraved on my Glowforge. This part is um, just a corrugated craft paper. Um, and I used it here too. Hmm. And these are little plastic clasps that came off of a tool box. I just, we just don't throw anything away because it might be useful. Um, yeah, and so uh, I just added all of this stuff to it and turned it into its own thing, so. I love the lights from inside. It makes it look so good. It looks like, you know, yeah, like every movie, really? they, oh, you're right. they always have that effect where it's like the face is underlit. Yeah, that's the whole point is like, I just wanted a space helmet that I could put lights in. And so I had to like make the space helmet. But um, when you add the lights in there and you put on put it on, you can't see very well out of the visor. So don't uh, do this on like an actual helmet that you want to see out of. Um, I think yeah, for cosplay, you know, if you're, just, if you're just posing, you know what I mean? You turn yeah. it on and pose and then. Exactly. It's great for photo shoots or I don't know, like a low budget sci-fi horror film. Um, I've got an itsy bitsy M0 in there and a microphone and some NeoPixel strips on the inside. Oh, and then these little diffusers, I was totally inspired by a couple of weeks ago when you were talking about the the um, the glue gun glue as mm -hmm. a diffuser. So I made these little diffusers out of hot glue. So, and I just painted See, them. it works. And it's perfect. perfect, it's exactly what I needed. 
So All right, well, be careful. Like, watch out because there's probably some AI going to take over your spaceship and turn off the life support system. But other than that, a great build. Right. <laughs> right. Can't oh, wait. Open bay doors, Hal. I know. Good work. Okay, Melissa, we're back to you. Hi, Melissa. Well, welcome back. Maybe. Okay. Okay, uh, where is at. Um, so I originally had made this using an Arduino Mega, and um, I have some ports on the bottom of it. Like I had a USB port that was originally the same as the Arduino, and some a little, some little dip switches so I could change modes easily. Um, and so one of the challenges in building this was converting to the 3.3 volts instead of the five volts, but I found that the radio receiver for the remote um, um, would run just fine on the 3.3 volts, and I'm slowly converting things over. It looks amazing. So the uh, basics functioning. Yeah, keep posting up um, things so we can see it, because I've been adding that to the newsletter, and people could see the progress. Yeah. Yeah, this is good, awesome. Good work. And thanks for all your um, help with some circuit Python libraries. I know. Oh, they're awesome. Yeah. I can't. I can't wait oh, yeah. to try if your. If you want a sticker for your car, you know to get a hold of it. Yeah, I'll send you a sticker. Right. <laughs> so if you don't want to, if you want, but yeah, you have lots so of stickers. So if you want to get hold of this, if you want a sticker for the. Home. Oh yeah, I, I got like a few stickers, and I'm good with that. Yeah, <laughs> right. send you hardware or something. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you for hardware. Hey right, Dan. <laughs> hey Dan, unmute your mic and show us what you're building. I'm getting one. Dan frame per second. One Dan, if if you can get on Ethernet, that'd be good. If you're not, sure. We can't hear yeah. you either. Dan, we we're can gonna, see you. We're gonna go to someone else, Dan, and we'll come back to you. You might want to drop and come back. Another connection. Can barely, barely hear you. Barely. It's getting one. Very choppy. One Dan word per minute. <laughs> Dan frame. All right. Okay, we'll come back. We'll, to you, Dan. we'll come back to you in a minute. All right, we're going to go to Lucien, and then we're going to go to TG Techie. So, Lucien, okay, Lucien. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah. um, can, can you guys hear me okay? You guys hear me okay? Uh, this is my first time um, um, being on, getting to do the show and tell, so I'm, I don't know. Looks what good. All right. Good, good. Um, am I still muted? Can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, good. Cool. Um, so yeah, so I'm a, I, I knew Scott back in uh, Seattle um, and he mentioned this and I wanted to get on because I use the, the Adafruit library so much, but I've built this thingy. Um, um, is a, um, I, I like, I, I do all my coding on the computer all day, every day, right? And I'd like to do creative writing, but I don't like doing it on the computer, right? So I made this thing that is definitely not a computer, but it's not quite a not computer, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it can save um, it can anyway. save data, but it doesn't go on the internet. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. So, so it is a, a combination e-paper and LCD screen that has you know file typing capability um, and basically makes up for the really terrible refresh rate on an e-paper with a you know a synced up uh, LCD, but everything auto updates to the um, to the e-paper automatically. Uh, that's cool. Um, and so it, and it's rigged up to a, um, a SD card. So you can actually, so here is, I can load up like all of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It can handle that. Um, so you can, you can write a, a file of just kind of any arbitrary length, um, and then, uh, save it to an SD so that you can, uh, have it later. Um, but, uh, I felt like, that wasn't a, a lot of pizzazz if you're trying to write something out and then redline it in keeping with the whole trying to keep stuff off the computer feel. So you can also, let's see, where's a, where's a good one? Hit the, uh, hit the print screen. Oh, come on. Don't die on me. Oh, right. Okay. And then it's actually got your receipt printer up here. Oh, that's great. Good. <laughs> so this is this is basically a typewriter, but for the modern age. It is it is a it is a modern day anachronistic typewriter that yeah, I I mean I'll I'll use it. I don't know if anybody else will, but no, are you talking to show up at the local me. coffee shop, drop this down and just be like, what? With yeah, your, right. With so computers being able to, to get do the work anything, now. The the Moore's law and the computer is able to do anything, 
people want appliances that just do one thing. So this is an excellent project. Right. Well, so that's actually the name of it. So it's a it's a spud, a single purpose user device. So this is okay. the spud, right. All right. Well, congratulations. Email support at Adafruit, and we'll send you an ad scene on the show and tell sticker that you can put on your spud. Oh, uh, sweet. And then also email pt at Adafruit dot com, and I'd like to um, feature it on the blog. Maybe you can send a couple of photos. Sure. Of said spud. Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And, and what's, yeah, what's in it? It's a Raspberry Pi, or what's on? What's the so, computer? So yeah, it's actually it's running embed under the hood because okay. nothing else could handle the frame buffers for everything else. Um. So you know, I'm I'm interested in embed because I've used it in previous companies. I have kind of a love hate relationship with it because it's similar enough to, you know, Arduino that it's. Yeah. You know, you can I can port all the all all of Lady Ada's libraries to it pretty easily. Well, um, check out our new e-ink displays because we put SRAM buffers on the back to solve right. the problem, so that you can write to the SRAM and then you because you have to blit the whole display at once. And yeah, it's like you need like 50k of of RAM. So that's how I solve. It's a little bit more expensive, but our e-ink breakouts they they do have the SRAM on them, so you can you can use that schematic and wire up your e-ink if you want to try something. Right. Out. Yeah. No, I am. I'm gonna try that for next time. Uh, we're we're I'm working with a, a guy out in Seattle to do the V2, where we're gonna try and put a whole bunch of lights in. Make it look kind of Blade Runnery and Dude. You know, get to a get to a next version. So I can't wait till you have curses running on this and I'll play NetHack. All right. Um, down, oh, the road, yeah. down the road, if you're interested, we have a new product coming out called Pi Portal, and it's an LCD screen and uh, Circuit Python, and has a micro SD card on it. So you might be able to do a lot of stuff with that. And Scott yeah, got well, working I mean, on a Model M. The yeah. big the big thing for me is just anything that can increase the refresh rate. I really tried very hard to get. The the refresh like a fast mode that would just yeah. use the refresh and it is just it's it's a bad time so I don't know yeah oh, these, these are things they, they just yeah because they're they're passive matrix basically you have to update the whole display you can't right. do it. right well there's yeah there's some that have partial refresh but their buffer is weird so I'll keep I'll, I'll maybe if I come up with updates I'll, I'll <laughs> right on. welcome to bad data sheets written by people who don't want to communicate <laughs> the yeah. ILI ninety three seventy six coming your way all right next up TG Techie. Get going on. Is that better? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, so, um, thanks, Adafruit. You sent me a beta version of the Pi Portal to test. That's right. So, um, I've been working on porting my stuff to Display Yo. So far, I have made a little library that oops, upside down lets you put. Shapes on the display, so it'll auto shape and return oh, a child grid the other way upside down, yeah. with a customized palette. Um, I'll post a link to the. This is some nice uh, shapes. You repo. got round racks, you got ovals, circle. I mean, like you're getting all the shapes. Nice shapes. Yeah, the basics. Um, I'm gonna. I'm trying to add text to it, um, just so it's all in one place and it'll do the coloring for you. Um, but yeah, that's what nice. I'm working on. Oh, yeah, do you have that like yesterday? Yeah, uh, I also <laughs> did port my GUI to work on it, but I just emulated an old display with Display Yo. It was not good practice, but it worked. All right, All right uh, sweet. We'll keep hacking on it. I'm glad it found a good home. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, we're going to try Dan, and then we're going to go to Roberto. Let's see how Dan's connected. No, Dan is still Dan? frozen in time and space. But he's so, in front of like, the White House or something. Yeah, he's somewhere. That's kind of cool. I got one tourist photo there, it looks like. All right, okay. go for Roberto, it. Roberto, what are you up to? Uh, hey, guys, can you all hear me OK? Yeah. Yep. Nice right, earrings. So on Monday, I'm sorry, last Monday, I was able to participate in a video for a wellness and healthy living podcast. And I offered to cosplay Freddie Mercury. And so the maker aspect comes in that I uh, modeled these uh, earrings. Uh, this is the first iteration. I actually wore this, but I don't know if you can tell the, the clip broke off. Mm. So I had to go to the second iteration and make it more flimsy so that I could wear it. I actually went through like five of the earrings in about an hour's time because this kept breaking off. And it's written in OpenSCAD. And I'll very quickly, because uh, I know you all have time, uh, are limited on time, show uh, some of the actual uh, photos that came out of that. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so this is the video, which is the season finale for the show called Fat Talk. And it, like I said, it's about weight loss and stuff. And here is a uh, part of my, you know where I, where I come out doing the cosplay. And I, I forgot to mention, it's from um, the song I Want to Break Free, where in the beginning he's, uh, he's in drag uh, doing the vacuum and stuff. So that, that's it there. And here's a, a model of the actual earring side by side with the best images I found for uh, reference. 
And then here's some you know, actual footage of the video. And the source code and STL files are available on Thingiverse. Oh, I thought I had it open, but um, here's the source code for it. And this link here is, uh, well, I guess I should just link to it, right? And and this is where you can grab the STL, STL files from Thingiverse. Sweet. Yeah, well, you did a great job with your cosplay. I can't tell the difference. Good, good timing <laughs> on all the Emmys and Oscar stuff, so. I know. Yeah. All right, thanks for having me. All okay. right, thanks and, uh, everybody. We're gonna try right. to go back to Dan to see how his connection is. All right, Dan, you're, you're a couple frames a second, but you wanna hold up your project? All right, can you? Oh, you're kind of coming in one, one Dan. Yeah. Sound snippet. Why don't you just hold it up and we'll get okay, so yeah, this is ink. this is an e-ink display. It's a calendar. I'm wired up to looks like you made your own custom feather wing. Could do a feather from Osh Park. Is it purple? It looks purple. It is purple-y. And it's displaying the date. It's the thirteenth is correct. Yeah. Good work on that the time display and then yeah, it looks like you got another one. Another and one smaller. This is a name badge. Yeah, has Linux name. infrastructure architect. Nobody such as a meeting displayer. Oh, it just refreshed. Oh, someone is scheduling you for a meeting. You should totally. Yeah. You, you should you, get on the show. And you can chat Lucian about <laughs> update rates. <laughs> yeah, you guys are both e ink experts now. This is another Spud device. It does one thing. That's a nice font action yeah. there. Only seven fonts. All right. Looks great. Well, thank you so much, Dan. We got this. Yeah. You know what's cool about e ink on show and tell? Even if the it looks great. Even if the video isn't fast, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's e ink. It refreshes it'll, once every minute. It all works out. Okay. Nice e ink. E -ink. It's the first e ink video broadcast. Okay. So e ink badge, e ink calendar, yeah. and then we also have an e ink um, touch type display. Yep. So right. it's e ink well, week. Thank you, everybody. This was show and tell. Um, come back next week, 7 30 p.m. Eastern time. We do the show and tell every single week. Thank you, everyone, showing you sharing your projects. Thank you, Teacher Techie. Live so long quick, and prosper. Everybody. You know, Pedro, Melissa, Lucien, Kenny, Aaron, Dan, and everyone else is on the show and tell. We'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Ask an engineer starts in like a minute, 30 seconds. Spock, Bye. start the show. <laughs>